Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to test and replace the thermostat on a mini fridge like this one. On this shelf, all the drinks I have froze, so I think something's wrong. Let's fix it. Before you touch anything, make sure the refrigerator is unplugged for safety. Next, you can use a small flathead screwdriver or pry bar to remove the thermostat knob. Now we can remove the thermostat cover. It's usually held on by one or two screws, so you can just use a screwdriver to remove these screws, and the thermostat cover should come right off. The next step is to remove the thermostat itself. It's usually held on with either a small nut like this one, which you can unscrew, or by a couple small screws, which are also easy to remove. Once the nut or screws are removed, the thermostat should then just pop out of the holder. Be careful when removing the thermostat as the probe and wires can be delicate. Unplug all of the wires from the connectors on the thermostat. I found that on this refrigerator the connectors are a bit tight, however with a bit of wiggling they come off easily. If you have to, you can very carefully use pliers to pull them off. After disconnecting all of the wires, you can then remove the thermostat. This probe is passing through a tube that goes to the back of the refrigerator and you can simply pull it out. Before replacing the thermostat, you may want to test it to make sure it's actually the thermostat that went bad. Here I have a known good thermostat, and to test it, the first step is to turn the knob all the way to the left. This sets it to the highest temperature setting. To make sure that the thermostat works electrically, you can use a multimeter and set it to continuity or resistance mode. Measure the resistance across the two terminals of the thermostat while it's at room temperature. If the resistance is almost nothing, that's good. If the resistance is high, that means the thermostat failed open. It's a bit more complicated to test the thermostat to make sure it shuts off when cold because regular ice isn't cold enough to shut it off. However, you can take a can of air duster, turn it upside down, and spray it on that probe. After a few seconds, you should hear a click. Now you can measure the thermostat with the multimeter again. If there's no contact across these two terminals, that means the thermostat works. However, if you still find continuity between them, that means the thermostat has failed closed. Now we're ready to install the new thermostat. It's quite straightforward. The first step is to remove any included mounting hardware. In my case, I have a small nut. This just comes off by hand. The next step is to carefully straighten the probe, being careful not to kink it or bend it too sharply as that can damage it. Next, carefully feed the probe of the thermostat down the tube that you removed the old thermostat probe from. Be careful as the tube is somewhat delicate, and once you've hit the bottom, stop. Now you are ready to reconnect all of the wiring. The green ground wire goes to the ground terminal, which is usually smaller than the power terminals, and is connected to the steel casing of the thermostat. Make sure to push the connector down firmly until it seats all the way. Then you can connect the two power terminals to the two brass connectors. The polarity doesn't matter as the thermostat is a simple mechanical switch, so it doesn't matter if the order is reversed. The next step is to mount the thermostat. Push the knob part of the thermostat through the hole in the plastic cover, then secure it with the mounting nut. This nut only needs to be tightened to hand tight plus about a quarter turn with a wrench. Be careful not to over tighten it as that can damage the plastic. The next step is to reinstall this plastic cover piece. Be careful when pushing it into place as you don't want to kink the thermostat probe tubing, which can damage it. Once you have everything lined up, you can then put in that screw to secure it and tighten it down. Once you you have everything reassembled, you can then plug the refrigerator back in, set the temperature to the desired setting, and wait overnight for the temperature to stabilize. It's now the next morning, and as you can see here, the refrigerator temperature is in the ideal range according to this thermometer. That means that the repair was a success. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and see you all next time.